Fam, we live at the Bully House with the pups. Hanging out on hard on the yard. I got Domino out. But, uh, that's some of the pups, y'all. Hard cut bully pups right there. That's just that boy Domino, too. But today I wanted to talk to y'all about exotics, man. Because I know y'all been hearing me, uh, uh, talk the last few days about breeding and different genetics and different things that we do in breeding and breed stock in particular. But I wanted to uh, make sure y'all know that exotic bully breeding and what I'm doing is different. And there's reasons that it has to be different. But there's different rules to it, so let's kind of break it down, man. This this is my boy Domino. He pretty short pocket. Most pockets that you see are exotics. Uh, so when I say a pocket, most of the time this is not what people are looking for because he got that pit bull face with him, but he still got the small frame that I bred for. You know, but what he doesn't have is a oh a underbite. What he doesn't have is a kink tail. And he's tall enough that he can breed by himself. Most exotics are too small to breed by themselves. I had Chucky out here and I put him in with every female I had. And he tried his best all day long. As far as he know, he did, did it successfully, but he never really reached it because he's just not proportioned right to be able to do it. Uh, so for him, you have to have artificial insemination. That's totally different than what I'm doing, which is natural breeding. Now, even at my level of what I'm doing, I could go and get a stud from somebody, somebody else that could ship me some semen, and I'd have to do artificial insemination. So that's the same on that level. But when I consider breed stock for my, for pockets and above, it's not what exotic bullies consider breed stock. Because what I consider a flaw is not a flaw for exotic bullies. Because every exotic bully just about is going to have one of the, the first way that you become an exotic bully to me is you got to, you, if you have a kink tail, a curl tail, or a half tail, short tail, that's exotic, right off top. Then you go into the size. Is it, is it shorter than the, than the the class for American bullies? Is it under 14 inches for a male, under 13 inches for a female? And then you go into, uh, does it have an underbite or an overbite? What's the muzzle like? The underbite is when the bottom jaw is elongated. It's longer than the top jaw. Most exotic bullies have an underbite. So when they go and look for what breed stock is, the breed stock is going to have two flaws in it. That's why it's exotic. But for, for 14 inches and above, for what I'm doing, two flaws is not breed stock. And I, I'm saying this to clear up some stuff. I, talk, I had a guy ask me this the other day, watching the channel. But he's doing exotics. So his the standards for exotics is going to be different than the standards that I'm making. My dogs are totally structured. That's why I stopped doing exotics. I have Chucky, which is one of the most straightest exotics there is, but he still has an underbite, and he still has half a tail. And he's still too small to breed on his own. That's another kind of one of my standards, that I want the dogs to be able to breed on their own. Come on, Domino. So when you go to look at flaws and exotics, it's not, as, not the same as looking at exotic. Uh, uh, flaws in pocket bullies and, and as, as standards, classics, XLs, all those dogs are different standards. Now, what's important about that is if you know you're going to have a couple dogs with flaws that you're breeding, it's, it's important that you don't double up on flaws and make something deformed, something that's not healthy. It already... 
not healthy. Uh, because of how they built up. That's why I don't do exotics anymore. But they are the best. Man, Chucky's one of the best dogs ever. He's just a, He has to be uh, a house dog. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just I wanted more functional bullies. That's why I started Hard Cut Bullet Kennel. My bullies to be able to run around on the property like this with me be out here, you know. Um, but breeding for exotic is different. Uh, so they can have two flaws. They can have a kink tail and an underbite and still be good breed stock. The thing that you don't want to do is have a bad front end and then breed it to another dog that's got a bad front end. Have a bad, they both got stiff stifles in the back. That That's not going to work out. They uh, they both got un underbite and kink tail. And they both got a bad front end. Okay, don't do that breeding. I took two of the funniest looking Chuck, uh, 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 exotics you can think of in Chucky and, and Tri Roxy, and uh, I made drip because it's a certain way that you can do this, and you'll, you'll, you'll come up with a great dog. Drip has got perfect posture out of those two crazy looking bullies that I had. So, it's all in how you do it. And if you're going to do exotics, just be careful in what you're doing. Don't go so much on the name, man. They, man, I'm tired of hearing it. I don't really care who your dog is out of. I really don't care. All I care about, see, I do not care what your dog is out of. What I care about is how your dog look. I do not care how long you've been breeding. What I care about is how your dog look. If I count more than two flaws, I'm not impressed. I don't care how long you've been doing it. I don't care who he's out of. So don't get over overwhelmed by, oh, he's three times this and four times that. It don't mean nothing. What does the dog? He could be out of the. He could be out of the same litter as a champion, and he could be the flawed dog. So it does not matter that. Look at the dog too. That matters, but it matters what the dog looks like too. So, exotic bullet breeders, I ain't mean nothing by it. I ain't mean to count y'all out. And I hope this clarifies what I was saying. Uh, but with that being said, you still got to be, you have to be responsible in your breeders. With that being said, even though that's what exotic is, you have to look at what structures you're putting together. You're still responsible for that. And I'm telling you, you can have a bunch of uh, puppies with, with clept, clept, uh, clept uh, palate, clept lip and all that, and bad tails, your whole litter, it's, it's not going to be something you like. So be careful. Don't say I'm hating. I'm talking about breeding and creating a different, creating a species of animal is what we're doing. So be for real with it. Don't just go out and think that you got two exotic bullies and you can put them together. You're going to end up with a bad litter. You might get one out of that litter, but the rest of them going to be bad. So, anyway, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me, man. Hit that like button, hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button. And you need and, and you need to come on off the bench for the big win, man. And get you something hard cut. Zone.